festive and delicious. The seafood platter is a must. I sell the seafood platter for $48 and it can go up to $65 with a half a lobster on it. It's expensive. Where do all these products come from? And are they all truly of high quality? Rangis, the largest fresh produce market in the world. We have a report of several people becoming sick after eating shellfish caught in the same place. This is called a group food intoxication. So we understand that the risk of contamination to shellfish comes from both the earth, but also from the sea. People may not be aware that the shellfish they consume can have a health risk. That's what we'll take for quality and size. It's what we need for Christmas. Blaster Brewing Company is basically a little project that uh, is filled with my brother and I's dreams and passions and goals all worked up for almost 10 years now. I mean, the, the joke in South St. Louis, you'd walk into any bar and said, what beers do you have? And they would say, we have them all. And what that meant was we have everything that Anna's Bush makes. In eight days of business, we've, we've sold 65 kegs of beer, I mean, almost 8,000 glasses of beer. In a lot of ways, I think craft beer is about having a, a beer and a beer that even makes you sort of think on its own because it's, it's, it's a flavorful thing that's been crafted by real people that work just behind these walls right here. The key thing in Oscar Blues is that we will slow down if we have to because the first thing first is the beer because otherwise we can't do anything else. Oscar Blues is about the people, but we all, but our life force is the beer. The beer has to be world class. For tens of thousands of years, man has eaten animals, which he first hunted and then learned to rear. The majority of people eat meat. They eat the flesh of animals who are cruelly treated. There's no respect, there's no care, there's no understanding. And that's what meat is all about. If you care about animals, you have to care to stop the cruelty in meat production. For a few years now, in the Netherlands and in the United States, the idea has been gaining ground. That would be my ideal, that um, 20 years from now, everybody is eating cultured beef instead of livestock beef. Meat consumption is set to double over the next 20 years. So could in vitro meat, provide a real possibility of feeding the whole of mankind. Man has made the planet and everything on it his subject. When our ancestors were beginning to walk and energy-rich food was discovered, meat. Today, around 800 million livestock are slaughtered every year in Germany alone. Vegans don't eat meat, don't drink milk and even deny themselves that breakfast egg. For me, consuming milk and other dairy products is animal cruelty. Vegan cuisine is unbelievably diverse. This is pizza dough that you put into water and knead. Then you're left with a mass which tastes like pork, firm and tasty. It took three years for the first vegetarian sausage to be brought to the market. We make about 50 million euros a year with our vegetarian products. So there's really something happening in Germany. It's not about to stop. A few years ago, Sam got sick after eating some contaminated chicken. Why am I resistant to every single antibiotic that they're giving me? It was a wake-up call. It forced us to ask a lot of questions about food. My wife Jennifer wants to raise chickens in our backyard and get the whole family to understand where our food comes from and how we can grow it ourselves. Concern amongst parents and pediatricians is growing. Everyone is worried that our children aren't going to live as long as we do. Childhood obesity, environmental estrogen, type 1 diabetes, genetically modified food, factory farms, antibiotic resistance, superbugs, dissolved fertilizer from the corn belt, E. coli, mercury, cancer. The cautions about our food system are everywhere. For the past year, we've been filming our first steps into the food revolution. Danny was figuring out what they were paying for each egg. I don't think they're going to get any eggs. And much bigger steps taken by food patrons. 
to inspire us to keep going. I just thought like, well, now's the time again, right? Now's the time for people that can do something to do something. I met Frederick Zanella on the meander of an amazing river. Fred, or Zanell to his friends, does a special kind of fishing. Equipped with an ultra-lightweight natural bait rod, he uses a frame, which is a little wooden object that has been passed down from traditional Swiss fishing. This river, called the Drans, is where Fred chases fish with his unusual technique. Drance has a somewhat unique quality which sets it apart in the Swiss fishing world, thanks to the presence of huge trout, who swim up from Lake Geneva every year. The size of these fish, their strength and their craftiness can only be matched with Zanel's passion for catching. Farmers around the world are pushing the limits to increase food production, often with devastating effects. We have to double food production by 2050. Agriculture is by far the, the biggest impact that humans have on the environment. It's really important to move towards less toxic chemicals, uh, less toxic inputs. Could science really solve the upcoming food crisis? Or do organic farmers hold the key to feed a hungry planet? Considering such an increasingly critical situation, how could we manage to feed another two billion people? We have to solve those problems, or else a lot of people are gonna die. Wheat, the basis of our diet, which we cannot do without. The yellow of the wheat, the blue of the sky. These are the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Before the war, the Ukrainian farmers supplied over 5 million tons of grain each month. The United Nations has warned the war in Ukraine could cause global food shortages. Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Iran, Lebanon, Yemen, the whole of Africa and the Maghreb. Millions and millions of hungry people. Billions of dollars short of what I need around the world. And there's still 25 million tons of grain and oil seeds left in Ukraine. That's the third of last year's harvest. They've seen that uh, they may uh, stop supplying uh, the world with the food, and they do it. The only option is to get the grain out of Ukraine is through the Black Sea port.